And today I have Mark Chandler with Bannockburn Forex. And Mark, it's so good to hear you today or have you here today. Post FOMC, we've seen this huge move in the dollar and we've seen rates move higher. And I guess my question to you would be, is this move here to stay or are we gonna just gonna consolidate a little bit with the dollar? What, what do you think? And, and like I said, nice to have you back. Great, thanks, good to see you. You know, it is kind of funny. It's like uh, when, uh, when, the, uh, when the foreign currencies sell off, everybody becomes bearish. And it's always great to be bearish in a you know, down market. But I wonder if, if what's happening really is that the Federal Reserve didn't begin the move. To me, the dollar's correction really began uh, late May, earlier this month, really going broadly sideways. And that sideways movement seemed to me to alleviate some of the overextended nature of the technical indicators like the MACD or the slow stochastic. You know, that because the dollar had been falling in, in, uh, throughout April and, and May, that these uh, indicators seem stretched. And I'm not good enough to figure out the timing exactly of the corrections and the bounces, but it did seem to me that the dollar's downside momentum uh, was fading. I think about the dollar to Canada, uh, 120 is very important on a chart level to me. Uh, we go through that, there could be a big double top that could project back to parity, maybe a bit below. Yeah. And uh, it was repeatedly tested, it held. And so to me, the dollar, the US dollar was already firming up off of its lows before yesterday's move. And so it's, it's sort of like, for me, I can say it's like, uh, where are you in the boxer's punch? And I think we're at the tail end of it. It's not like the boxer is just about to punch. If the boxer's arm is already stretched out. And then even on some indicators now, the dollar is overextended to the upside. I'll give you one example here today as, as we speak here today. The, the euro is testing the uh, 119, 20, 30 area, more or less. And this is not only is it a Fibonacci retracement from you know the whole the whole rally since the end of March, but this is putting the euro at three standard deviations away from its 20 day moving average. I know this sounds like a lot of hocus pocus stuff, but remember what the Bollinger Bands are, two standard deviations from a 20 day moving average. It's like, how far can that rubber band stretch? And we are beyond, the three standard deviations is a, even if the markets are not fully uh, normally distributed, a standard deviation I find just tells us that the market has really moved very quickly against the Euro. And what I suspect this is, is a lot of stale longs being forced out of the market. And uh, I'm not sure whether it's the, uh, the climatic sell-off, the capitulation here yet, but I did see a couple of large uh, US banks uh, give up on their long, do uh, their short dollar view yesterday. Yeah. And so it tells me that we're getting close. Uh, if we take out this 119, 20, 30 area, I could see us going maybe 118 and a half. And that probably lifts that dollar index that we all track. Uh, above 92, maybe it's 92.40, 92.50 area. But I'm thinking that uh, that the interest rate story is not completely over yet. Uh, before the Fed met, the market was pricing in one hike by the end of next year, looking at those euro dollar futures. It's a little bit more than one hike now priced in. Uh, the 10 year yield, we're talking about 155, 156 on the 10 year yield. I just can't consider that very high yield when inflation is, is north of 2%. Uh, so, and other central banks are also moving. I mean, uh, uh, we've had Norway this morning said they're going to raise rates in September. Uh, the Bank of England meets next week. Uh, at the last meeting, they announced they're going to slow down their bond purchases. Inflation is above their 2% medium term target. Uh, they could taper again. And I think that at the end of the day, the Federal Reserve, I thought Powell was very clear about this yesterday. The Federal Reserve, what's in front of them now is about the pace of buying. It's not about a rate hike. So he basically says discount to talk about rate hike. That's not even, he's, he's, he, wants to, he wants to say, not, let's not even talk about it. We can't even talk about rate hikes, but we're just beginning to be able to talk about tapering. And tapering to me is just putting your foot less on the accelerator, but it's not putting it on the brake. Right, that makes a lot of sense, Mark. And, but as, uh, as you know, and this is one of the things that I love as a trader uh, of currencies is now interest rate expectations might be moving or shifting a bit, even though it's just asset purchases, but it's all central banks are starting to move. And with that little bit of movement or the little bit of expectation change, we're starting to see an increase in volatility in the markets. And from what, I, from what it sounds like, from what you're saying is the dollar, it may have rallied a little bit, maybe a little overextended, but we're probably gonna be consolidating more than anything. 
Yeah, I think so. And I think that what this means for volatility, because I know uh, it's like we, we like volatility as long as it's not too much. Right. And, uh, and typically right now, I think it's important that volatility is going up alongside a rising dollar. And that tells me that uh, that's, that's a significant change in psychology because uh, we're going back to levels we've seen already as opposed to uh, as opposed to breaking out of ranges, really. Uh, and so for me, what this means is that the, the move in volatility, uh, you should enjoy it while it lasts because it might not last that long, especially if we go back into that consolidative mode. You know, that tells me that we want to probably do is look to, again, take advantage of bounces in volatility to sell into them. Uh, and I, I think that you see this as well from people in the, uh, I was looking at the, uh, the put call skew, the risk reversals. And it seemed to me that what a lot of market participants had done is they were short the dollar and, and volatility was coming off. Partly as they were selling calls uh, for protection on the foreign currencies. So selling calls, uh, widen, out the, widen out that skew, uh, putting downward pressure on volatility. And so uh, what, I, what I'm looking for is them to begin buying back those short call positions. So volatility goes up, not because they're necessarily buying calls because they're bullish, but just to, uh, to unwind their hedges or to basically reestablish them as we get into the end of the month, end of the quarter. That's a great, that's a great point. I think that positioning had a lot to do with the moves that we've seen the last 24 hours and might see over the next 48, 72 hours, maybe going into next week. And so, Mark, I want to say it's always great having you here. I, I love your views. One of, the, one of the things that I've learned about you over the last 20 years of watching you on CNBC and Bloomberg and, and just having conversations with you one-on-one -on -one is that you love to put a technical view together with a macro point of view and taking in all sorts of considerations. And I think that is one of the most valuable traits as a trader you can offer uh, all of us that are watching you today. Yeah, thanks. I think it's, it's a hard thing because, you know, early in my career, there's a big division. Be you were either a technician or you were a fundamentalist. And then after what happened in Afghanistan, nobody wanted to be considered a fundamentalist anymore. You know, and so uh, I really think that uh, trading is so difficult that we need to have as many tools as we can in our kit. And the, the macros are nice. I mean, they make great cocktail conversations. But uh, where to put a stop? Uh, knowing which, where our key levels are on the charts, knowing where the Fibonacci retracements are, 200-day moving averages. I don't, I don't know how to do my job without taking those like practical things where the rubber meets the road into account. The macro, I think, is like it's fun to talk about it and think about it. It offers us a big framework. But I don't know, I don't know people who make money in the markets who are just macro fundamentalists. You have to marry it with technicals and because price doesn't lie, right, Mark? Yeah, the price, price doesn't lie, but it's very fickle. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, um, Mark, thanks again for joining us today. And I know everybody at uh, Trader Summit's really going to get a lot out of uh, watching and hearing you today. And folks, this is Mark Chandler from Bannockburn Forex. Thanks for being here with us again. Thanks. Good luck to everybody.